All right, you clods. We asked you who your favorite crystal gem was, and the vast majority of Nerdwire fans voted for the one, the only Peridot. So since y'all love her so much, we're gonna dive into Peridot's story in the show, as well as some facts about the real-life evening emerald that could have led Rebecca Sugar to draw inspiration for this feisty little character. I'm Chris Carr, and today I'm talking to you about Peridot from Steven Universe. Before we start talking about this pint-sized technician, I want to give a shout out to all of our supporters on Patreon, especially our super nerd sponsor of the day, Ronnie M. If you can, you should check out our Patreon page and see if a donation tier works for you. You'll get cool swag, behind the scenes footage, and more, and we get to keep the power on. If you can't support with your dollars, remember, liking, sharing, and subscribing are awesome ways to help Nerdwire out. To the gym! Hmm, who is that? No idea. Peridot, specifically Peridot Facet 2F5L Cut 5XG, was a homeworld gem technician and certified kindergartner, someone with the credentials to run the facilities where gems were created. Peridot was created during Era 2, the time after the Gem War. Despite not being around for the rebellion, Peridot is well versed on its events, having read hundreds of years worth of reports. Peridot was tasked by Yellow Diamond to monitor the cluster and ensure the Diamond Authority's plans for Earth move along smoothly. While acting under the orders of Yellow Diamond, Peridot ends up stranded on Earth and is captured by the Crystal Gems. Thanks to Steven, Peridot begins to warm to the Crystal Gems and helps them save Earth from the cluster. Something doesn't feel right about this. Then use the D-pad. She becomes an official member of the CG when she tells off Yellow Diamond in the episode, Message Received, and defies her commander's orders. Peridot believes that Earth should not be destroyed, but rather utilized for its unique resources. Yellow Diamond disagrees and makes it clear that she feels the Earth should absolutely be decimated. Realizing that Yellow could not be reasoned with, Peridot stands up for the planet, stating that there are things on Earth worth protecting. You're a crystal gem! Whether you like it or not. In one of my personal favorite episodes, Log Date 7.15.2, Peridot grapples with the consequences of her outburst and rebellion. She uses a voice recorder she even gives her to log her time on Earth. During this episode, we see Peridot experiment and explore this unknown world. She pushes Greg off a roof to see if humans can fly. She questions if everything is a weapon. She learns about friendship and telling jokes, and probably most important, she grows close to Garnet and learns about fusing from her. This episode is so important to the development of Peridot because it shows her willingness to learn and that even if things make her uncomfortable or she's not ready for them, she wants to know about them. I have attempted a fusion with the fusion Garnet. I had hoped to gain a better understanding of fusion. Instead, I gained a better understanding of Garnet. Peridot is calculating and analytical, and seems to serve as the standard, stereotypical alien, down to the star date log she leaves herself and little green body. She's an overly inflated ego and manages to offend the Crystal Gems constantly when she first befriends them, using her knowledge of Homeworld and its caste system to make assumptions about Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl. Hey, uh, this is Amethyst. I don't appreciate being called a clod, you clod. Enough talk. Peridot learns and grows through her time with Steven and the crew, but continues to often be blunt to a fault, prioritizing logic over all else. We all have that friend who's honest to a fault. You know, who says the wrong thing, but it's right. Do you not have that friend? Guess what? It you! Like any good, logical being, she is a shipper with some theories about her favorite show, Camp Pining Hearts. Or as I like to call it, Outdoor Degrassi. It's the greatest show to Peridot and Steven, except season five. Season five is trash. My Camp Pining Hearts DVD? Which season? Five? Trash. I know. Her shipping board is my favorite thing Peridot has done. It's like the murder board on a law procedural. Like she's trying to find out who the Zodiac killer is. But you know, love instead. Jesus, I hang out with Whitney too much. Everything can be compared to solving murders now. Focus, Chris. Speaking of shipping. Brett, I need you. Go get over it, Percy. Go make another friendship bracelet. Seriously. Peridot's most prominent relationship in the series is with Lapis, a gem who was caught in the crossfires of the Homeworld Crystal Gem Rebellion. There's a lot of speculation when it comes to these two. Are they best friends? Are they a couple? A lot of you in our comments section have been heated about whether or not these two should be together. Many of you have said that it makes sense and that you'd like them together. 
while others vehemently disagree. Those in Camp Nou have voiced that they feel this relationship dynamic is toxic, with Lapis engaging in emotionally abusive behavior towards Peridot. Peridot does monitor her phrasing with Lapis in order to keep from upsetting her, and Lapis often cuts and runs. But I'm not sure where I stand on these two. Let me know in the comment section how you feel about a Peridot-Lapis romance. What are you doing here? Just showing off my old room to... Oh, wait. Actually, that's none of your business! According to the Steven Universe podcast, Peridot was originally conceptualized as a cyber bully who would torment Steven. This informed how she ended up as a character, someone from far away who was comfortable threatening Steven and the Crystal Gems. Her go-to insult, calling people Claudes, was inspired by supervising director Ian Jones Cordy's ongoing use of the word Claude when he would jokingly mock people who didn't know about or understand a subject and call them Claudes in a weird voice. You Claude, you're mega Claude. Those Claudes, lumpy, clumpy Claudes. Running out of ways to say Claude. Now I'm gonna give you guys some factoids about Peridot the gemstone that I think may have impacted her character and creation. Peridot or Peridot. God, how f***ing confusing is that? Just back and forth. I feel like such an idiot reading so, this script. Why they call her Peridot? I have no idea. I feel like it's solely to make my life hard. This is speculation on my part, guys. And you know, I love any excuse to geek out over history and mythology. Many of you may already know that Peridot is the birthstone for August, my birth month. And I hate it. Typically baby poop colored green, and I'm sorry, I don't want that around my neck. People with this birthstone fall into two astrological signs, Leo's and Virgo's. If you subscribe to the personality attributes of these signs, these are perfect for Peridot's personality. Leos are known for their confidence and stubbornness, while Virgos are known for their type A personalities, rigid nature, and organizational skills. Guess which one I am. It's not the cool, confident one. It's the uptight virgin. What do you mean? Let's fuse. Oh, my stars! Throughout history, numerous legends have reported the power that Peridot possesses. When set in gold, many Romans, for example, believed that the gem would act as a talisman that could dispel the terrors of the night. Others credit the stone to bring happiness and love. It's also said to nurture friendship and free the mind of jealous thoughts. I found this association really interesting. When Peridot first warms to the crystal gems, Peridot definitely has a tendency to engage in possessive, jealous behavior. Wait, what do I do now? Don't just leave me here. For crystal enthusiasts who feel gems help ward off emotional and mental afflictions, Peridot is believed to be capable of countering negative emotions and have the ability to balance the process of emotional release, purge negative thoughts, and restore balance. It supposedly can soothe nerves and heal emotional pain. Again, this notion dates back to ancient Romans who would treat depression with Peridot. And I certainly wouldn't swap Wellbutrin for Peridot, but when we look at Peridot's relationship to Lapis, one could make the argument of Peridot healing Lapis's emotional turmoil. After all, Peridot is far more successful than any of the other gems in connecting with Lapis and making her feel safe and at home. More of the supposed healing properties of Peridot really fit into their relationship dynamic. In addition to the mental clarity and feeling of well-being the gem is said to deliver, Peridot is often given to those who need to cleanse themselves of emotional baggage and start anew. Peridot is associated with helping people let go of the past. The gem is often gifted to those with self-esteem issues and those who need to be reminded they're deserving of love. Steven gave me this tape recorder as a gift and I didn't really get it at first, but it made me feel better just to talk about all the weird stuff that was happening. It'll help you too. That, in a nutshell, is what Peridot is constantly trying to do for Lapis. Focus on the present, not be dictated by the horrors of her past. Peridot is trying to make her friend feel safe and loved and supported. Did I lose you with all the healing properties of crystals? Okay, um, all right. I see how that can all sound a little hippie, so how about I talk about something hella cool? Like the periodic table and iron content. No, seriously, this is really cool. Hang with me. Actual Peridot comes in yellow-green shades. The color is determined by the proportion of iron present in the stone itself. The deeper the green, the smaller the amount of iron present. Paired out the character herself is a very light green, so probably not a lot of iron present. It's me you're after, right? I'm not gonna stand by and let my friends fight my battles! Aw, Perry loves us! But what's that? She has telekinetic powers associated with metal? That's pharaokinesis, Kyle! In the episode Too Short to Ride, Peridot learns that she's basically the Magneto of the Crystal Gems. She can levitate and control metallic objects, and while the extent of her powers is unknown at the time of this recording, it appears that she's mostly manipulating magnetism. I love this iron fact about the intensity of the actual gem, and I would argue that this influenced Peridot's given power. I'm obsessed with this! I love science! 
You're welcome. Now, am I grasping at straws with these gem connections? Did I leave out your favorite thing about Peridot? Let me know in the comments below. For more videos on Steven Universe, just click to the left of my face or check us out on Roku or Plex. Thanks again to all of our supporters on Patreon, especially you, Ronnie M. And thank you for watching. See you, Space Cowboy.